So a couple of days ago, I was sitting in my room getting bored and thinking what to do. I decided to do something different in JavaScript and realized how cool would that be to try and create a simple game using just HTML and JavaScript code. After a while, I thought to give it a go and create the classic snake game. There is a high probability that you have played this game in your old Nokia phones as I have. If you haven't, then it is a game in which we control a snake which eats randomly generated rodents on a grid. With each rodent killed and eaten, the snake grows longer in length and the snake's speed also keeps on increasing. So it's a fun little game, but nonetheless it takes a considerable amount of code to build it. Here is the finished game which I am talking about. So the game is in the form of a grid and we provide the size of the grid and then press a button to start the game. The initial rodent and snake position will be generated randomly. The browser window will accept the keyboard inputs to move the snake. The frames of the game and their delay will be controlled by a JavaScript function. When the snake will move to any invalid cell, then the game will be over. So if I will have to play this game, first I will have to input the size of the grid and then we can simply start to move the snake using the arrow keys and moving the snake towards the randomly generated rodent which is in the red box and the snake's head is denoted by the green cell and the tail of the snakes is denoted by the black cells or the black colored blocks so this is how this game is played when the snake will keep on eating the rodents then it's Tail's size will also keep on increasing along with the speed at which the snake is moving. This is going to be a series of videos because I don't want to create a very long video and I prefer to make short ones because I think that they are easier to watch and learn from. Also this game is free to use but by no means contains perfect code. I have tested it but not too much and there could be performance issues although I think they would not arise for most browsers. So I would suggest you to test it first before using in your own projects. You can download the source code from the URL given in this video's description and you are free to use in any of your personal or commercial projects. So let's get started and create this fun little game. So this is the existing code and to walk you through guys through this code I am going to create a new file and let's just call it index2.html and I am going to add some initial html content to it and also let's increase the size of this document let's just close the existing file first we need to create the input elements which are going to accept the size of the grid of the game and also to start the game to accept the size we need an input element or a text element and to start the game we need a button so let's just create them so enter size and then input type is going to be text and let's set the id as txt size let's have a line break and now let's have a button so input type is going to be button and let's set the id as btn start Let's set the value as start. Let's have a couple more line breaks. The basic idea is we are going to create a table with rows and cells. So each of the cells of the table are going to act as the cell of the grid and we are going to treat them as the x and y coordinates of the grid. We will create the table depending on the size that we have entered in this txt size field. Let's now add a new script element and first we need to add a bunch of variables which are going to be in the global scope so that the functions which we are going to create can easily access them. We will need a div to keep and write the score while the game is being played. The snake is going to be an object with two properties. The first one is going to be the head which is going to be another object with two properties named x and y. These will denote the position of the snake's head in the grid which can be found using these x and y coordinates. The tail is going to be an array which is going to have more objects containing the properties x and y and similar to the head 
the tail objects are also going to denote the position of any individual tail segment in the grid using the x and y coordinates we are going to use these x and y coordinates to display and show where the head every tail segment and also the rodent are currently in the grid for the rodent which the snake is going to eat we will denote it with another object with its own x and y coordinates we are going to need the direction in which the snake is currently moving this direction will also be useful to find if the next movable block is valid or not let's have the variable to store the size which has been entered into this txt size field let's set the initial speed to so this speed is actually the interval between multiple frames so if the speed value is more then the frames are going to display with a longer delay which simply means that the snake will move slower if the speed is less then the frames will display with less delay and subsequently the snake will move faster so if we want to improve or increase the speed of the snake we will need to reduce this speed value and so on and so forth let's also have a variable which will indicate if we have lost the game or not there will be a variable to keep the score so every time the snake will eat the rodent the score will increase by one and then finally we are going to keep the reference of the frame interval which is going to be executed in each frame when the button btn start will be clicked then we will have to start setting up and drawing the grid and then starting the game itself by starting to render the frames depending on the interval which we have set in the speed variable so first let's set the click event for the btn start button and that can be done by calling add event listener and then providing the event value click and then we can have a function which will be executed when the button will be clicked first let's get the size which has been entered into the txt size field and now we need to add the message labels using the div score which we are going to create and add dynamically to the body to create the div score div we can use document.create element and then providing the name of the element which we want to create which is div let's set the id of this div score to which is going to be the same as the variable name which is div score and then just add this div score to the documents body by using document.body.appendchild and then providing this div score as an argument so div score has been added now it's time to construct the main grid which will be in the form of a table so let's create a new table by calling document.create element and then providing the name or id of the element which is table let's set the cell spacing as zero because we don't want any kind of unnatural spacing between the cells and we are going to set the margin later using style sheets to create the style sheets for all the elements which we are going to add inside the body what we can do is we can create a style element and then we can start to add the styles the first style that we need to add is for the div score in which the score is going to be displayed and we just need to keep it somewhat wide and also we need to increase its font size while keeping it at the center and now let's add the style sheet for the table which we are going to add and let's set the class name as game table so the only style that we need to set for the table is to keep it centered by setting the margin as zero and auto now let's set the class value which we have just created with the class name above in the style element and that is the game table so table dot set attribute and the attributes name is class the value is game table class and then finally add this table to the documents body after this div score by calling document dot body dot append child and then providing this table as an argument now the table has been created and now we have to set up all of the rows and cells of the table and the cells of the table are going to act as the x and y coordinate blocks which the game code is going to use and move the snake around and also to generate the random position of the rodent for that we are going to use a for loop so for let i equals to zero and then i is less than size and then i plus plus this is for the rows and for the cells we are going to use another loop 
so i'm just going to copy this one from over here and instead of i we are going to have j let j equals to zero and then inside this i loop block we need to create the rows for the table so to create a row what we can do is we can simply create a new element for each tr element or table row element when we have created the row then we will need to append it to the table above which we have created and append it to the body of the document so that can be done by calling table dot append child row table reference can be fetched easily because it is in the current scope of this function similarly we can create the table cells by calling the function document dot create element and then providing the value of the element which is td now we need to set the initial class of this block and we also need to set up the class values when the block is hosting any of the other states like when the block contains the snake's head or if it contains the snake's tail segment or if it contains the rodent the class value is going to be different for the block so when the block is empty then we can have a class and let's just call it block off this class is going to have a border of black color and it is not going to have any kind of background color for the snake's tail segment we can create another class and over here while keeping everything the same as before we can simply add another css property which is the background color and the value of the background color for the tail segment is going to be black in the similar way we can create the snake head while keeping the background color as green and we can also create the rodent style and for that the background color and the border color are going to be red because the rodent will be all red now it's time to use those classes which we have just created and when we are creating the block elements using the td element then first we are going to set the initial class value which is block off which simply means that right now no other state has been set for all of the table blocks like the snake head the snake tail segment and the rodent this will be done later when we will be updating the state of the grid for each frame we also need to set the id of the blocks now for the id we need to identify using the cartesian coordinates which are the x and y and for that we are going to use the id block and then simply setting the value of the i and j loop variables so j is going to denote the x value and i is going to denote the y value because the i loop is moving from top to bottom and the j loop is moving from left to right that is why we are doing that and then finally we can append this block to the row which we created in the i for loop and that is pretty much it to set up the initial table grid now it's time to generate the random initial start positions for the snake head and its initial tail segment so create the snake to create the snake we first need to fetch the random x and y values for it and for that i am going to create a new function because we will need to fetch the random values more often later while coding this game we are going to need to create a function for the ease of using the get random number code so for that i am just going to add a new function and let's just call it get random int this is going to accept two arguments min and max and it is going to spit out a random number which is in this range between the min and max also including them so to create the snake let's have the x and y values variables so x well and y well is going to denote those variables to get the random x value we can simply call get random int and this is going to be between 0 and size minus 1 because this is a 0 based array similarly for the y value 2 we can copy and paste and use the same line of code to get the random value and then we can simply set the snake objects head property value using these x and y values so x is going to be x well and y is going to be y well so the snake head has been randomly generated and now it's time to create the tail for that first we need to get a random direction and then in that direction we are going to figure out the cell block which we need to use for the snake's initial tail segment so there will be four directions over here top and bottom and left and right and we will need to denote them with integers 
and it is better if we create a function to get the directional blocks x and y values the random direction itself can be fetched by fetching a random number between the range 1 and 4 so let's get the random direction by calling get random ind and providing the arguments as 1 and 4 to create the function to get the block which is in the direction of the snake's head we can create a function and we can denote the directional values using integer numbers like 1 2 3 and 4 and based on that we simply need to move in the direction and fetch the values of the x and y coordinates so this is the function get directional block it is accepting the values of the cell from where we need to calculate the next cell block by moving in the direction so x and y is the value of the x and y coordinates and the direction is the direction integer so one direction value denotes that we need to move towards the left and fetch the cell block so x is going to be x minus 1 y is going to remain the same similarly for right we need to move towards the right so x is going to increase y will still remain the same and so on and so forth for the top and bottom where we are going to subtract and add to y while keeping x as same to fetch the value for top and bottom so this function is going to be used a lot in our code because we are going to need to fetch the next directional block from the snake's head now let's fetch the block which is in the direction that we have randomly calculated this can be done by simply creating a new variable and let's just call it block equals to get directional block and providing the snakes head coordinates so snake dot head dot x and snake dot head dot y and also the direction that we calculated and this will return the block and we need to use this block as the initial tail block but first we need to make sure that this new block is not invalid because if the block is outside the bounds of the grid then it is going to be invalid also if it is the snake's head then also it is invalid so we can create a function which will check if any block is currently at the invalid location or not and we will also use that function to check if the game can be played further or not or to stop the game altogether because the user's snake has moved to an invalid block and for that we can create a new function and let's just call it is block valid this is going to accept the arguments for the block whose validity we need to check and we will also need the size to compute the bounds of the grid and we will also need the snake to get the snake's head coordinates and also all of the tail segment coordinates first let's set valid equals to true which we are going to return and let's just return it to all right so let's first check if the block is out of bounds of the grid or not this can be done by simply um, having a simple condition which will check if the x and y are still inside the size or not next we can check if the block is sharing the same location with the snake's head if it is then it is going to be invalid if the valid is true from the previous condition and if x and y are equal to snake's head x and snake's head y then valid is going to be false and then finally we need to check if the snake's tail segment are sharing their location with this block or not and that can be done by having a simple loop and we will simply go on checking each cell if the cells x and y values are similar to this x and y arguments as well if it is then we will simply set the valid as false and we will break out of this loop and then we will return it otherwise valid will keep on being true for the rest of the code and it will return as such so getting back to the code to create the initial tail segment in a random direction from snake's head we will keep on checking if the randomly generated directional block is valid or not if it is not valid then we will fetch a new random direction if it is then we will simply keep on using this block as the initial tail segment so while this block is not valid we will keep on generating new directional blocks and if it is valid then we will simply push this initial block into snake's tail so snake dot tail dot push and then we will simply push a new object into snake's tail by setting x value as block dot x and setting y value as block dot y 
so we have the initial random location for the snake's head and for the initial tail segment and now we need to set the initial movement direction for the snake and that can be done by simply using the direction which is opposite to the direction in which we generated the snake's tail so if the direction of the snake's tail segment is top then we will need to use the down direction or bottom direction if it is left then we need to use right if it is right then left and so on and so forth so this code of four if blocks can be used for that if the direction is left then we will use right if it is right then we will use left and so on all right so this is going to be the end of part one of this series to summarize in this video we have set up the initial grid and we have created the initial random snake head and its initial tail segment in the next part we are going to generate the random rodent and we will write the code to draw the grid for each frame and we will also write the function which will update the game for each frame and i will see you in the next part till then have a great day